Once upon a time, in a farm of a peasant family, a hungry wolf was trying to catch one of the lambs. Come, come, chick, chick, chick. Come here, little lambs. <laughs> come, sheepity, sheepity, sheep, sheep, sheep. But as he approached, the shepherd noticed the wolf and alerted his dog, Sultan. Sultan, what are you waiting for? Run and save the lamb. But Sultan was such an old dog that the shepherd was quicker than he was. And the shepherd saved the lamb from the wolf before Sultan could get there. The next morning, while the peasant couple was talking about how old Sultan the dog was, the wolf whose eyes were still on the lambs, started to listen to them. Ah, uh, we can't keep going like this. How is our dog supposed to protect our house when he can't even protect the lambs in the daytime? Yes, you are right, but... Sultan must leave this house. If we lose the lambs because of him, we'll lose our livelihood. The old Sultan was very upset when he heard what was said. Witnessing all this... The wolf had a clever idea. Hey, you, old dog. Woof, woof, woof. Calm down. <laughs> I'm not here for the lambs. Uh, this time, I came for you. Woof. What? You're going to eat me? My day just keeps getting worse. <laughs> no, but your owners are going to kick you out of the house. I have a great little plan that'll make you look like a hero to them. The helpless sultan was curious about the wolf's offer. Tomorrow, when you bring the lambs out to graze, leave them and go out of sight. I'm going to kidnap... I'm going to kidnap one of the lambs. Then... What? No way. No, 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 no. Wait. Just wait and listen. So... I'll pretend to kidnap the lamb and secretly bring it back to you. Then you can take it to your owners and become a hero. <laughs> uh, what do you think? You, how can I trust you? In return, you give me a few chickens to fill my stomach and then we'll be even. <laughs> Sultan accepted the wolf's offer. In the morning, the peasant family took the lambs out to graze as usual. And after a while, Sultan left. Have you seen Sultan? No. He's got to be around someplace. Ugh. I'm sick of this lethargic old dog. Not far away, the old Sultan made one of the lambs sneak to a far corner, being away from the flock. The lamb was frightened and looked around in fear. Finally, the cunning wolf suddenly appeared from behind the bush where he was hiding. <laughs> Come here, little lamb, little lamb. You're mine now. I'm going to eat you. <laughs> the wolf approached the lamb, but there was something he did not see. As he walked, the ground gave way and he fell into a deep pit. Uh, what's happening? Oh, where, where, what is this? Get me out! Get me out of here! Get me out! The old sultan came to the top of the hole and looked down at the fearful wolf. <laughs> Howdy, old dog. Can't learn a new trick? You thought I would just trust the word of a wolf? <laughs> I have always been loyal to my owners. I would neither sacrifice lamb nor chicken for you. <laughs> roof, roof, roof. Sultan barked loudly and called his owners. Roof. Oh, Sultan, good job. Well done. By catching the wolf, you saved all our lambs, Sultan. Good boy, good boy. Sultan, how did you do this? Good boy, old dog. <laughs> yes. Sultan was a very old dog, but he outsmarted the wolf. The night before, he had dug a deep hole and covered it with leaves to make a trap for the wolf. And from then on, 
Sultan's family treasured him and even adopted another puppy named Hank to help out with the sheep. So Sultan trained him in all the wise ways that the old dog knew and taught him to be a protector and loyal dog to his family, just as Sultan was. No matter what, always be a loyal dog. One morning, while the treacherous wolf was hunting in the forest, he saw a stork family flying in the sky. He knew they had built a nest in the hills, and they had eggs in that nest. And that gave him an idea. Ha ha ha! I found what to eat. Stork eggs. Ha 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 But I have to think about how to get to that hill. Hmm. And cuddled up warm in that nest was a baby duck, sleeping soundly. His stork brother rang the bell to wake him up. Hey, wake up, duck. Quack, quack, quack. The duck woke and jumped up. Huh? What's going on? We're going for a flight. Mama will check the eggs. Don't fall asleep and be eaten by the wolf. Wolf? Yes, because you can't fly high like we do. So, uh, see you later, little flightless duck. Bye-bye. <laughs> but little did they know, the treacherous wolf was already watching them and planning. When the stork siblings flew up into the sky, the baby duck tried to follow, flapping his little wings on the edge of the reeds. He hoped that one day he'd be able to fly. But his practicing was interrupted when he spotted something shining brightly among the reeds. Who? What's that? The bright thing he saw was a pair of red shoes. How beautiful they are. I wonder if they will fit on my feet. As soon as the baby duck put on the red shoes, he took off from the ground and flew high in an instant. <laughs> I'm flying! I'm flying! The baby duck immediately followed the stork family. Oh, look, the baby duck is here. Wow, how did you get so high? Thanks to my magic red shoes, look! <laughs> Down below, the wolf was watching them in amazement. Magic red shoes. Ah, now I have a great plan. At night, while the stork family and the baby duck were sleeping, the wolf sneaked up on them. The red shoes glowed brightly, even in the dark, and he stretched out his claws and grabbed them by the strings. Tomorrow morning, first thing, I'm going to have a stork egg omelet. <laughs> The baby duck awoke as the morning sun rose, and he was alarmed when he couldn't see his red shoes next to him. Oh no! My shoes! My magic shoes are not here! How am I going to fly? The baby duck rushed to look for the mother and his siblings. Mother Stork! Brother! Where are you? However, he could not find them anywhere. <laughs> now I won't be able to fly high without my magic red shoes. <laughs> While the baby duck was crying with sadness, he noticed the treacherous wolf flying overhead. <laughs> I'm flying. <laughs> Here I come, stork eggs. It's breakfast time. Oh, my shoes! The wolf stole my red shoes! The baby duck tried very hard to follow the wolf, but it took all the strength his little wings had to take off, and then he would fall back down to the ground. Oh, I have to protect the eggs from the treacherous wolf! Oh, if only I could fly! The wolf landed in the nest with the magic shoes and stepped towards the stork eggs. The baby duck could see him 
trying to get the eggs, one by one. The stork eggs are in danger! I must stop the wolf! The baby duck mustered up all his courage and flapped his wings as hard as he could. Uh, uh, Eggs! I must save the eggs! Finally, the baby duck was in flight, high in the sky for the very first time. I'm flying! Yay! I can fly! (laughs) The baby duck landed and sneaked up on the wolf. He grabbed the shoestrings of the magic shoes and quickly pulled them. What? The baby duck? Shoes? Just at that moment, the stork family quickly came to the baby duck and drove the wolf away from the nest with a fury. (coughs) The treacherous wolf fell into a swamp. The stork family thanked the baby duck for saving the eggs. Now you can fly as high as we do. (laughs) Yes! Then it's time to fly together as a family, kids. The baby duck was so very happy he could fly. And from that day on, he realized that he should never stop trying and that he didn't need magic shoes. He just needed courage and perseverance. So the baby duck became the only brave duck that could fly with the storks in the sky. Once upon a time, there was a diligent laundryman in a village far, far away. The laundryman had a tiny house and a barn behind his house, where his beloved donkey and horse lived. (laughs) What a tiring day yesterday was. (laughs) <laughs> Whoa, Orsi, if anybody's tired, it's me. Hee-haw. I'm carrying the whole load. Maybe, but I'm carrying the laundryman himself. <laughs> Hello. Come on, hope you got some rest, because it's time to hit the road. Every morning, the laundryman loaded up the donkey with all the clean laundry that he had washed the day before. Then he mounted his horse and set off for villages far away to deliver their laundry back to them. All through the day, he delivered clean clothes to people and took the dirty ones. However, the donkey often grew tired because he carried all the laundry and was usually exhausted by the time he got back to the barn. He would eat and then fall asleep immediately. What are you doing, donkey? Sleeping already? (laughs) I could go for a run around the barn. Of course you could. You are not the one who had carried all that heavy laundry. The laundry man woke up early the next morning and washed the dirty laundry he collected yesterday. Yep. Now that I'm all caught up, I'll go to the village and collect more dirty clothes. The laundry man took his horse and donkey out of the barn and set off on the road. I've come to get your dirty laundry. Ah, glad you're here, laundry man. Here's the dirty laundry we've been collecting all week. Thank you, ma'am. I'll get your clothes back as soon as possible. The laundry man knocked on the doors of all the houses in the village. He collected a lot of dirty laundry from almost 15 houses, and he put the whole load on the poor donkey. Yee-haw! Yee-haw! These are too heavy! That day, the laundry man walked beside the donkey so that the loads would not tip over. But the donkey was exhausted. His legs gave out, and he fell down in the middle of the road. What happened, donkey? You're very tired, aren't you? We'd better get some rest here. The laundry man laid down under a tree to get some rest. Hee-haw! Hee-haw! Hey! What do you want? I just wanted to say that today my load is heavier than usual. 
Couldn't you just help me a little? <laughs> Sorry, donkey, but it's not my job to carry laundry. <laughs> the laundry man finally stood up and they were all on their way again. They took a few steps, but suddenly the donkey fell to the ground again. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Oh, my poor donkey. Sorry, I made you very tired today. Come on. Drink some water. The laundry man took all the laundry off the donkey and put them onto the horse's back. <laughs> the donkey finally felt better, but this time the horse's load was too much for him. I should have put half the laundry onto the horse's back from the very beginning so that the donkey wouldn't have been injured. Since the horse did not help the donkey, he had to carry all the laundry on his back all the way to the house. When he got to the barn, he couldn't even eat because he was exhausted. I did something selfish today, my dear friend. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> now you understand me better. Helping and sharing is important. Yee -haw, yee -haw. Never forget that, my dear friend. From that day on, whenever the laundry man had a lot of laundry, he took care to share the load between himself, the donkey, and the horse. In this way, they were less tired and had more fun. Once upon a time, when animals still had the ability to speak, a huge buffalo was living on the shepherd's farm. The buffalo was helping the shepherd in the field work. And the shepherd was doing his best to make him happy. One day, the shepherd, who was taking the buffalo to graze, sat under an apple tree to get some rest. At that moment, a hungry, cunning wolf sneaked up and followed them. Mm. That buffalo would be a great lunch for me. <laughs> but I need to get rid of that human. The wolf suddenly appeared before the buffalo and the shepherd. I have a few questions for you. If you can't answer, the buffalo is mine. The shepherd and the buffalo were very curious about what the cunning wolf would ask. Why does a buffalo serve a human when he has such powerful horns, huh? Well, because I plow the shepherd's field, and he feeds me the best food. Hmm, well, how can a shepherd make this huge buffalo serve him? Is that a magic cane in your hand? No, it's not the cane that's magical. It's our wisdom. The wolf did not understand what the shepherd meant. Your wisdom? What's that? That's not an answer. Now I can take this buffalo home if I want. But I'm very curious about this thing called wisdom, too. It's not with me. But if you want, I can show you wisdom on one condition. What's that condition? Until I bring the wisdom, I will tie you to this tree so that the buffalo will be safe while I'm gone. The wolf was so curious about the thing called wisdom that he even agreed to be tied to a tree. While the shepherd was leaving to bring back wisdom, the buffalo was grinning at what would happen to the wolf. <laughs> Although the wolf could not understand why the buffalo was laughing, he continued to wait for the shepherd for hours. After a while, the shepherd came out with a big box in his hand. He opened the lid of the box, but the wolf saw that the box was empty. Well, wisdom, where is it? Did you bring it? It's inside, right there in the corner. If you don't see it, 
let me untie you so you can take a closer look. As soon as the wolf got into the box to see the wisdom, the shepherd closed the lid on him. <laughs> help! Help! Wisdom is too precious to fit in a box, dear wolf. Wisdom is in the mind, and you can only find it by searching for it like hidden treasure. I promise I will never underestimate the minds of others again. Now I will be more generous and smarter. Please, get me out of here. The wolf remained in the box for a whole day. The next morning, the shepherd and buffalo saw the wolf learned a good lesson and took him out of the box. Thank you, thank you, thank you. From that day on, the wolf got along better with other animals in the forest and respected everyone's mind, from flying birds to tiny insects. The Envious Neighbor Once upon a time, there was an old couple in a small village. They had no children, but they had a beloved and devoted dog named Max. Max, sit down, give paw. Good boy, good boy, here you go. Max loved them too. One day, while the old man was busy with his garden, he saw Max excitedly digging in the dirt. This made the old man very curious, so he started digging in the same spot with his shovel. The old man's wife heard Max's excited barking and came out to see what was going on. It didn't take long before the man's shovel hit something hard. I think you found something, honey. What the old man found was an old chest. Curiously, he opened the chest and saw that thousands of gold coins were shining brightly in it. Ah, this must be a dream. We're rich. I can't believe it. All thanks to this smart dog. Come here, Max. Well done, boy. However, the old couple did not realize that the young man, who was their next-door neighbor, saw everything that had happened. Hmm, a smart dog that finds a treasure. Let's see if you can find a chest full of gold for me, too. <laughs> At night, the envious neighbor sneaked in through the old couple's window. Uh, oop. Oh, they're sleeping. The old couple was in a deep sleep. The neighbor used dog treats to get Max to follow him. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> gotcha. And he took Max out of his house in the middle of the night and kidnapped him. The next day, when the old couple woke up, they could not see Max at home. Max! Come here, boy. Oh, my baby, where are you? As the old couple went out into the garden to look for Max, the envious neighbor saw the agitated couple. Hi, neighbor. Is your dog missing? Yes, neighbor. We looked everywhere, but we can't find Max. Did you see him? Yes, yes. He was running towards the city in the morning after a cat. The old couple went to the city to look for their dog. But the envious neighbor had hidden the dog in his own house. And once the old couple was gone, he took the dog to his own garden. <laughs> right this way to my garden. Holding tight to the chain, so that the dog could not escape. Come on, clever dog. Dig until you find a treasure, otherwise you'll never see your owners again. Max started sniffing sadly. After a while, he stopped and started barking persistently. 
Ah, right here. Okay. The neighbor thought the dog must have found something, so he started digging right away. And sure enough, he also found a huge treasure chest. <laughs> Here's a chest even bigger than my neighbor's. Good job, clever dog. The neighbor took the chain off and left the dog back in the old couple's garden. When the old couple returned home sadly, their dear dog Max barked to greet them. Max? Oh, here you are. We were so worried about you, Max. In the evening of the same day, the envious neighbor came to the old couple's house with great greed. I'm so glad you found your dog. I'm sure you must have been very tired looking for him. How about I take the dog for a walk today so you can rest? How thoughtful of you, neighbor. Max is a very affectionate and friendly friend. Of course you can go with him for a stroll. The envious neighbor called Max. Max took a few steps forward and started talking. Oh, this man is bad. I will never go anywhere with him. Seeing the dog talking like a human, the envious neighbor was stunned. What? How can your dog talk? The old couple did not hear Max's voice. <laughs> <laughs> but only heard his barking, so they thought the neighbor must have been teasing. If by talking you mean barking, then yes, he spoke. But all dogs bark. Why are you surprised by this? He... But, but, but he didn't bark. He spoke like a human. I swear to you. Hmm. Maybe it's you that needs some rest, my neighbor. Come by later when you've rested and then you can walk Max. The envious neighbor returned home in a daze. As soon as he woke up the next day, he went to the old couple's house again. I came to apologize for yesterday. Uh, I'm, I'm better today. Where is Max? Oh, I'm glad you're recovering, neighbor. Max! Come on, boy! Max came running, and when he saw the neighbor who was cruel to him, he spoke again. <coughs> that envious bad neighbor, what are you doing here again? The neighbor could not hide his surprise. He broke out in a cold sweat. What? No, he spoke again. Your dog is speaking just like a human again. However, the old couple heard Max just barking normally. Uh, my neighbor, you might want to see a doctor. Uh, you two are in on this. Witchcraft, wizardry, and your magic dog is making me look crazy. I know it. Max is just a regular dog. My husband and I are not wizards or witches. I know your magic dog found a chest full of gold in your garden. <laughs> but that was just luck, neighbor. <laughs> I know it wasn't just luck, and I'll prove it. And, and I'll do it in front of the village elder. So the whole village will see that you are wizards and, and you'll be banished from here. <laughs> As the envious neighbor was leaving the house, the old couple thought he was crazy. After a while, the envious neighbor came back to the old couple's house with the village elder and a few people with him. Here are the wizards in our village, see? And this is the magic dog. Dear elder, I think our neighbor is not well. He's talking like he's out of his mind. Sir? This couple has lived in our village a very long time. They are good-hearted. If you have proof that they are wizards, show it. Otherwise, don't waste our time. The envious neighbor beckoned Max to provide evidence to the elder. Tell me something now, magic dog. Tell me something. Well, let me tell you. You are an envious, evil neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> See, here's proof for you. A dog that talks like a human. The elder and the villagers looked at each other in astonishment. What are you talking about, neighbor? 
I'm talking about the dog. He just spoke. He spoke like us. Didn't you hear him? No, I don't think so. Sounds like any other dog. He just barked. But how can that be? What about you guys? Didn't you hear him speak? Villagers also said that the dog just barked. He's a magic dog that finds treasure chests. You must believe me. Dogs smell good and can find many things in the soil, mister. Yes, it was just a coincidence that he found a treasure chest for us. We were digging in our garden. See over there. Oh no, it wasn't a coincidence. So the envious neighbor told everyone how he had kidnapped the dog, had him dig his own garden, and the dog also found a treasure chest for him. What? Did you kidnap Max? The envious neighbor opened the treasure chest that the dog had found in front of everyone, and he saw that it was filled with sand instead of gold. Ah! How could this be? This is impossible! This is nothing but theft and slander. You are no longer our neighbor. Leave our village immediately. The envious neighbor bowed his head and left the village in shame. I know you are good people. Don't worry, our village will be a safer place now. Especially for your dog, Max. Thank, Thank you, dear, you, dear elder. elder. After all that had happened, Max made everyone love him with joy and excitement. <laughs> How sweet are you? <laughs> You good little dog, you, you boy, little thing, good, good for you. From that day on, the old couple lived a peaceful life with their dear dog, Max. I love you, dear family. What? Did you say something, my wife? No, I thought you said something too. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Goldilocks and the Panda Family. Once upon a time, there was a small house in the most beautiful part of the forest. And in that house lived a girl with blonde curls named Goldilocks. Goldilocks was so cute that everyone loved her so much. But this cute girl could be very naughty sometimes. One, two, three, no! Goldilocks accidentally knocked over the pie her mother prepared for her. Goldilocks, now you'll have to wait a little longer for breakfast, cause I have to cook a new one. And by the way, do not go out of the garden and don't go to the forest without telling me. Be a good girl now, you hear? Goldilocks was so bored while waiting for breakfast. One quiet step towards the forest. I wonder how far I can get before anyone notices I'm gone. <laughs> While her mother was busy in the kitchen, Goldilocks took one step after another out of the garden and into the forest. In the depths of that forest was a very cute bamboo house. A cute and sweet panda family was living in this house. There was a huge father panda, a medium-sized mother panda, and a tiny little baby panda. The mother panda would get up in the morning before everyone else and prepare a bamboo mash with vanilla for breakfast. Father panda woke up to the sweet smells coming from the kitchen. Then he went to wake up his baby. However, the baby panda, who loves sleeping so much, could not wake up. But he could not resist the wonderful smell of mash on his nose and finally woke up. The panda family were together around the table. They started to eat the bamboo mash the mother panda has prepared. But the mash was very hot. 
Mommy, Daddy, how about we wander around in the woods while we wait for our food to cool down? And we can collect some more bamboo and prepare food for the evening. The panda family left their meals on the table and went out to collect bamboo. Meanwhile, colorful butterflies surrounded Goldilocks, who frolicked this way and that in the forest. How beautiful this forest is! Look at these butterflies! <laughs> Goldilocks continued to go deeper and deeper into the forest while trying to follow one of the butterflies and finally got lost among the huge trees. As time passed, she was both tired and very hungry. She was almost about to cry. But she suddenly saw a bamboo house a little further ahead. She approached the house with joy and looked through the window. She saw three bowls of food inside. She went excitedly to the door and knocked on it three times. The door wasn't locked and it opened when she knocked and Goldilocks was so hungry. Hey, is there anyone here? And there sat the bamboo mash in one large bowl, one medium bowl and one small bowl. Since she was very hungry, she wanted to eat the bamboo mash in the biggest bowl. But when she wanted to taste it and put it in her mouth, her mouth just burned. Oh, ah, 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 oh. This dish is too hot. So she tasted the mash in the medium bowl. And this dish is too cold. Yuck! Then she took a spoonful of bamboo mash from the small plate. Mm -mm. This dish is neither too hot nor too cold. Just right for me. Goldilocks ate all the mash in the smallest bowl. She wanted to go and sit by the fireplace to get some rest. Here, too, she saw three different seats. She tried the big wooden seat first. Uh, uh, uh. This seat is very hard and hot because it is so close to the fireplace. She then sat down in the medium-sized pink seat. Uh, uh. This seat is too soft. This time, Goldilocks sat on the little red seat right next to her. Oh, this is very comfortable. But just then, the tiny seat broke into pieces. Oh no! Maybe I'd better go and lie in bed for a while. <laughs> Goldilocks entered the bedroom of the bamboo house. There were three beds, one large, one medium, and one small. Goldilocks first laid down on the largest bed. This bed is so hard, and the pillow is so huge. So she jumped onto the medium-sized bed, but it was too soft. Then she jumped onto the smallest bed. Oh, this bed is great. <sighs> Let's sleep well. Goldilocks fell asleep in the smallest bed. The bear family, who did not understand how time passed while collecting bamboo in the forest, finally returned home. As soon as they arrived, everyone wanted to sit and have breakfast. But a surprise was waiting for them at the table. Oh, someone has tasted my bamboo mash. Someone has tasted my bamboo mash, too. Bamboo mash. <laughs> it's all gone. Oh. The panda family stood up and started looking around. The seats next to the fireplace took their attention. Hmm. Ah, uh, 
Somebody has sat in my favorite chair. Someone has sat in my seat, too. Somebody sat in my chair, too, and broke it. The panda family went to the bedroom with curiosity. Someone has slept in my bed and pushed my pillow to the floor. Someone has jumped on my bed. Mom, Daddy, <laughs> someone is lying in my bed right now. <laughs> Mother Panda and Father Panda did indeed see someone sleeping in the bed of their baby. When Father Panda lifted up the cover, Goldilocks woke up immediately. When she saw three huge pandas in front of her, she was very scared. Who are you? Why are you sleeping in my bed? Well, I apologize for breaking into your house. I had lost my way in the forest and went in and ate some food. Then I fell asleep. Please don't be angry with me. It's not nice to break into other people's homes, little girl. Besides, your family must be very worried about you. Let's take you home. The panda family knew every road in the forest very well. So, they found Goldilocks's house in no time. Mommy, baby, my dear girl, we've been looking for you everywhere. We've been plum worried. I promise I will never leave the garden without telling you. Goldilocks's parents thanked the panda family for bringing their baby home. Since then, Goldilocks and baby panda became very close friends. And now Goldilocks always asks permission from her mother to visit the panda family, and she does so often. So she's never been lost in the forest since then, because her closest friend, the baby panda, was always with her.